Hey guys, really quick, I'm going to show you how to install Mini Conda 3 on your uh, Windows system. This is very important as uh, virtual environments are going to keep you from polluting your install. Okay, uh, what happens is you're going to be installing a lot of stuff, uninstalling a lot of stuff, trying one thing, trying another, and what happens is you leave remnants behind. Um, you have one dependency interact with other dependencies, and if you don't have those separated, uh, then you're going to have one app that is messing up another app, and then eventually it's going to mess up your Windows environment as well, um, and then you end up in reinstalling because your system is so goofy. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to really show you how to do this. There's another in virtual environment that you'll be using um, through Python. Um, it's a Python virtual environment. We'll talk about that in another video. You're going to need both of these, okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to start here with um, Miniconda. So first of all, I want to sh show you this. A lot of, um, you're going to be tempted to um, just say, why don't I just install the Anaconda Navigator? Okay, well the Anaconda Navigator is a full-fledged, massive version of, of um, this thing that you don't need. This is really for guys that are um, in deep in computer science, they're working in the industry, um, and it's, gonna help. it's not going to help you out. It, it, it's okay, but it's too big, it's, um, it's too um, unwieldy, uh, and it can end up causing you problems that are just unnecessary. You don't need this. So. Um, my advice is do not install Anaconda. Instead, what we're going to do is we want to do a Google search for Maniconda. Okay? And all you got to have to do is click this install. You're going to go down here, grab the exe installer, click that. Now it's going to bring you to this page here. And you got the Windows, the Mac, the Linux. Let's go ahead and just click the Windows. Okay? And we're going to download that. Easy peasy. Now, all we have to do is just rock on back over to here, go to our downloads and click it. But, here's the trick. You have to right click on it and then run it as administrator. If you don't do that, you will not have the permissions needed to install this. Okay? Uh, so, we're going to click next, agree. Okay, now, this wants to put it in the program data. I'm going to suggest you, you put it in the C drive. The reason for that is it's going to make your life easier once you get into code and um, having to access this stuff. You don't want to type C slash program file slash data slash app user slash local blah 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 blah. Plus, when you um, if you ever are trying to um, access this from a Linux subsystem or something like that, which we'll talk about again some other time. Um, if you put it in a place that has spaces, it's going to cause you problems. So just put it in your C folder under Miniconda 3. I'm going to give it a fake name here because um, I've already got installed. So I'm going to click Next. Now this is very important. Under here it says register Miniconda 3 as the system Python 3.12. You do not want that checked uncheck that. If it is checked, uncheck it. What that does is it sets up your Miniconda uh, or your Python in the system vari uh, environment variables. Okay, so um, it basically becomes your system's Python. If you're trying to use a different Python, uh, you'll get overwritten or you could have dependency problems. I've been in virtual environments where I have a different Python installed and this still messes it up. I'm telling you it is a headache you don't want to deal with. So isolate your Pythons okay on your main system. If you want to install Python on your main system you, you do that. Okay I would suggest 3.10.6 install this but do not register it. Okay then you click the install button and she's going to run. Okay now, what we do here is, once that is done, this is installed on your system. So all you have to do is open it up. It does not matter which folder you're in because it's put in your system environment. Um, not Python, but Conda, okay? And so if we type Conda from wherever we are, we're going to get the same thing, okay? Because it recognizes it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Conda create because we want to create a new envi uh, environment we're going to have to give it a parameter of name and we'll just call it test okay so it's going to go ahead and create this environment all right and then what we do is we activate test all right there you go that's that's easy stuff isn't it you'll see over here 
that um, it put test here. Now, no matter whatever folder I go to, I'm going to stay in that environment, okay? It's going to remain the same, all right? So if I install anything, I can type conda install, and let's install requests. Okay, it's going to ask me, do I want to install it? And I'll say yes. It goes ahead, downloads it, installs it into the virtual environment, and then we're done. Now watch this. I'm going to deactivate this environment. Let's get out of the environment. So I'm going to type D. I'm going to type conda deactivate. Now you notice I'm out of there. Now if I um, let's go go over to my Python and I try to import requests. It's not going to find it because it's not been installed uh, on my main system. But if I go back over to here and I go activate test and then I rock over into a Python environment and I go import requests, you notice it did it, right? It's separated the two. So we'll go control Z, get out of that, okay? Um, you can also uninstall one package if you want just by conda uninstall requests and we can go ahead and proceed it's undone okay so you can rip in it out okay within conda you can also use a pip install this is python's package installer um, so we could do the same thing pip install request now some things are available on downloading through conda some things are available downloading through python um, if you're following tutorials it'll typically tell you which to use okay this is why you have to have both of these but let's go ahead and deactivate that environment okay and now we want to go ahead and remove this environment so let's go ahead and we're gonna say conda what we want to do is we want to remove an environment okay we have to give it a parameter name and we're gonna tell it to get rid of test now and then we're gonna go dash dash all we want to make sure it gets rid of everything okay proceed yes and it'll take just a second. Do you wish to continue? Yerp. And now if you notice, if we say activate test, it ain't going to work. Okay? Now, let me show you another something real quick. Let's say I want to go ahead and we're going to go conda. Uh, we're going to create a new environment again. Give it the parameter name. Let's call this one test again. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and pre-install the version of Python that I actually want to use. Maybe on my system I have 3.12 something like that, but in this particular application it says you have to have this type of Python on. So, okay, let's do this one. Alright, let's try to turn those off. Okay, so we can go ahead and proceed. And now Python has been installed in there, okay? But you have to actually activate it again. And this is an important thing. Sometimes you forget to uh, you'll forget to um, activate the environment and then you install everything and oh no you you put it on your main system so then you got to go back and undo it but now if we go in here we can use python 3.10 as our main thing okay so once again we're going to go ahead and deactivate this and uh, and then we'll go ahead and remove it conda remove We'll go name, test, dash, dash, all, proceed. Yep. Okay. Now, a couple more things. Let's say I want to know, I can't remember the name of the environment I've made. So let's go conda. I'm going to say I want to look at my environments, and I want you to list them. And there, we're going to get a whole entire list of everything on here. So I can, these are all my environments. Okay. Uh and that's everything. That, I mean, that's literally it. You create these before you work on a project. Here I'm working on my voice craft project. Here I'm working on some transcription, a, a, a make thing, some llama stuff. Um, I create one for every app I'm looking at so that I can isolate it from the other apps. Okay? And then later, if I want to sell these things or package them to someone, I can package them easily. We're going to cover one last thing. Okay? If for some reason you get in here and you're typing conda and it ain't working... It means for whatever reason it didn't make it into your environment. So you click on your Windows, type ENV, and you're going to see this, edit the system environment variable. So let's click it. 
we can go down here to environment variables okay it's going to bring up this window we want to go down here to where it says system variables and edit it okay oops we don't want to edit it we want to go down to where it says path and then we want to edit that now what this does is whatever folder is in here you are now able to access directly just from the command line okay so if there's a run uh, that's in a folder. I don't have to be in the folder to run it. I can just be anywhere and type run if it's in my system variables. So you'll see down here I have C mini conda 3 conda bin, which means that's how I have access to using that conda um, keyword from wherever I am. All right. So if you do not see that in here, all you have to do is click new and then just type in the path to your mini conda folder and then the conda bin which is where conda resides and then you'd press ok I'm gonna press cancel but you would press ok you'd press ok you'd press ok and then you close your terminal window open that bad boy up again and then you will find that conda is working just like magic magic of the internet alright so there you have it we've installed mini conda 3 you are making ground like no one's business I'm so proud of you all right, we'll catch up with you later. You stay good, and we'll catch up.